Uh, okay, so I'm I'm uh, I'm going to talk about this EasyVueUQ um, library slash framework that, that Derek's been mentioning. This is uh, like other things in Vector Mode Toolkit is essentially meant as a as a standalone um, uh, tool in it, in its own right. But of course, we we've been designing it along with the rest of the Vector Mode Toolkit to try and uh, get something that that kind of is interoperable at the very least. It's fashionable uh, these days to talk about the crisis of reproducibility. In modern science, uh, this often is by reference to a nature survey where they asked a lot of scientists, um, maybe 1,500 scientists, if they could reproduce other scientists' results or if they could even reproduce their own. And uh, the survey seemed to suggest, um, say 70% said they could couldn't reproduce at least one other science experiment, and 50%, I think, couldn't reproduce one of their own, uh, which is obviously more serious. I think because everyone here does, or at least is related to, to simulation in some sense, particularly mechanistic ones uh, in this case, the question is, do you, do you actually expect people to trust your simulation results at all, right? Because it's, it's all very well citing it or saying this is very nice or we get the same behavior, same qualitative behavior, but if someone's going to tell you, oh, well, you know, your doctor is going to use this simulation to decide on your treatment, even in part, then a lot of people, even who work on simulations, are going to start looking quite uncomfortable. <laughs> um, and the same goes for drugs and, say, uh, materials that might be used in a, in a catastrophic uh, failure kind of situation. So there's a whole spectrum of things that need to be checked if you want anyone to believe your simulation or to even be able to use it as, as part of a decision-making process. This is this, is this VVUQ that, that, that Derek was saying. Um, stands for Verification, Validation, and Uncertainty Quantification. The basic idea here is verification is, uh, are you correctly solving your equations, whatever they may be? Um, so essentially the, the numerics of it. Validation, we mean, are those even the correct equations at all? Um, so essentially, does it fit the real world? Does it fit? experimental data in general, and uncertainty quantification, which obviously uh, just means putting error bars on that output. And unless you can kind of guarantee all of these to at least some reasonable extent, then you know, people probably have no business using the code in a, any kind of critical situation. Why do we need more? There are so many things out there. Uncertainty quantification is not new at all. Uh, I've listed a bunch of ones that we've kind of looked at. Um, I will have missed about 100, and I'm sure people will fill me in on the ones I haven't put up there. But basically, they, they all do different things, uh, say chaos. Some of these, in fact, we, we use as dependencies to our libraries, such as, such as Chaos Pi, and others, such as Uncertain Pi, we've been uh, using some of the kind of concepts from it. Um, but why, why, do we, why are we doing something else, right? Uh, well, it kind of depends on what you're, what you're particular design goals are uh, in this case. So what we're looking for is we want to make something that's generic, generic toolkit in the sense of not application specific. So you should be able to, to add this um, and not have to, you know, the rest of the toolkit doesn't actually have to care about the specifics of your code. That's the main point. We want it to be a low barrier to, uh, to integrating that into existing uh, HPC workflows and also to allow rapid prototyping of, of new ones. Um, probably starting a fight here, but to me that rules out C++ libraries to some extent. Um, we want it to be scalable. Um, at least some of these uh, applications we're, we're looking at, such as the Fusion one, generate at least, say, uh, a million jobs um, uh, for even like a relatively small um, sampling um, in a black box sense. Uh, but it could even go up to billions. So these can be very, very many very short jobs, for example, so the scalability matters. We want it to be middleware agnostic in the sense that part of, uh, part of going to say, uh, so here's this kind of exascale machine that everyone keeps showing pictures of. Uh, the idea here is how you efficiently use uh, massively parallel machines um, for different applications will obviously require you to, to change the execution pattern or, or at least the, the middleware that you're using to submit those. So we don't want to depend on any particular um, middleware. Um, obviously, the project in general is, is, has this multi-scale aspect here. So in, in, in our sense, we mean that as multiple computational solvers. Um, and we want this kind of framework to be a, a test bed for any new techniques or, or theory that comes out of the VECMA project. So, so it also fulfills that role. And the other thing is we want our workflows to be restartable. Um, 
because if you're running a million jobs, you don't really want to, you know, you want to be able to start off again where you left off if something's gone wrong. Oh, sorry. So the, the basic idea, uh, at least at present, so this is early work, but uh, Python library, uh, obviously, because it's a sort of lingua franca in, in a lot of the side of community. Um, we focus on non-intrusive techniques, so say black box kind of sampling. Um, and the basic, basic concept here is we, we provide a framework within which we put implementations of uncertainty quantification or validation verification elements. So I'm going to explain in a minute what I, what I mean by that. Um, the idea here is that these elements are reusable, generic implementations of some kind of primitive piece of a UQ algorithm or of a validation algorithm or whatever. That is, then we, we, you know, the user should be able to chain these elements together in a Python script. Right. Okay. Uh, here is an example of kind of UQ elements we've uh, identified. Um, so parameter, space, specification, samplers, encoders, decoders, collision analysis, probability distributions, possibly workers, I'll talk about that at the end. You can probably guess what at least some of these do, um, but I'll go through this anyway. Um, so the idea here is that they are, these elements are just software components that can be reused in a wide range of application scenarios. So it shouldn't depend on the application itself. I don't know how many of you have done uh, much of these kind of UQ workflows. I imagine a lot of you have. Uh, hopefully you agree that there is at least some kind of uh, repeating pattern you often see in, in these workflows. So we've identified so there's four stages. Uh, so sampling, model evaluation, so execution effectively. Uh, result aggregation, collation, and then an analysis stage. And then of course a user will have uh, some kind of complicated uh, flow um, control that they have to implement themselves. The abstraction, so how do we keep the rest of it generic? Well, the abstraction is occurring in this encoder evaluation decoder phase. So everything within here is application specific, but everything outside of that region is, is not. It's generic. The way we do this in EasyVVUQ is we have a, a central control object called the campaign. This kind of comes from, uh, this kind of uh, terminology comes from, say, uh, ensembles of, of say, uh, free binding energy in, in drug simulations and so on. People often talk about running a campaign of simulations. So that's, that's kind of where that, that naming came from. Um, this, uh, this campaign contains, well, or, or at least interacts with a, a database that could be local or remote um, that contains specifications of, of the various applications in your multi-scale model and any runs which have been mandated by a sampling algorithm. And the campaign kind of handles uh, all of these uh, verification, so of checking parameters are within physical ranges and, and, and any other kind of verification you can think of. Okay, so samplers uh, main job essentially is to generate run specifications which, which the campaign stores in its database. So what the sampler generates will depend on what kind of sampler you've chosen to plug in. Of course, if you're doing a polynomial chaos expansion, then it will generate some, some kind of runs and then if it's stochastic collocation, it will do something else. Um, and um, yeah, and the, and the sampler can either produce, add all the runs at once, or it can add them gradually, or whatever is needed to, to keep this uh, efficient on, on HPC. I kind of mentioned this, but the, what we call an encoder, if you've used UncertainPy or anything like that before, the encoder is essentially the pre-processing -proce stage, and the decoder is the post-processing stage. So essentially, encoder turns the generic, represent, generic uh, description of, of, of the run into the actual input files for a given application and the decoder obviously uh, extracts from the output um, what you're interested in. Um, we provide a kind of simple text file templating thing that comes, that comes with, with EasyVQ and, and that handles most kind of simple applications that just have a single input file. But of course you, you, you can write your own uh, encoder. It's, you really just have to, to implement one Python function uh, for, for your application. Decoders, I've kind of been through this 
but uh, essentially the decoder is responsible for, for knowing when a simulation has completed, so it has some kind of completion check. Uh, but the main thing it does is it, it reduces the dimensionality of the output data, that's, that's its main function. So in the sense that it takes the output and turns it into some kind of generic form that EasyViewQ understands. Um, we usually use, uh, say, Python data frames or something like that. Finally, you can specify a collation element. Um, it can be multiple things, but its, its job is essentially to uh, execute the decoder on output and um, aggregate all of the output of the decoder, either into the database or into memory or into a CSV file or whatever it is. Um, they can do multiple things, but whatever it is that's most efficient. Um, but the default is to then just give this back to the user in, in a pandas data frame that contains all of the collated results. Because um, we find that most people in the community know pandas or, or R, which is similar, so they, you know. Finally, obviously you want to run some kind of analysis on this. Um, but that will just, that will kind of depend on, on what you, what kind of sampling you've done and so on. But it could be something as simple as uh, just a bootstrapping uh, uh, if, you've, if you've run multiple, multiple jobs. Okay, so uh, here's a, a very simple example for a, for a, single, a single application, single campaign. Um, <laughs> you can't see that, can you? Um, it's, okay, so there's, I can, oh God, okay. How do I zoom on? Uh, wow, okay. Yeah, sorry, it's not great. Uh, is that better? Can anyone can, can sort of see that? Yeah. Okay, so the, this is, so basic ideas, you know, you, you, you can't see it here, but you, you import EasyVQ, and we've called it UQ in this case. So you, you just generate a campaign, you can tell it where, you know, if you want, you can tell it where to put all of its kind of configuration files, etc. You define the parameter space for an application. So you tell it, you just say which, what kind of names parameters have, what types they'll have, their minimum, maximum uh, physical values. This is for the sort of verification stage and uh, what default values they have. And then you specify an encoder and a decoder for that application. So in this case, we've used this generic encoder. That's, that's just this template, text template thing. You give it the template and you tell it what delimiter you're using. So here we've used a dollar sign. So in that case, anywhere in this template file that you have dollar kappa written, that would substitute in during the encoding stage, whatever value it needs. Um, and with the decoder, in this case, we, we know we have a CSV output file, so we've just used the CSV uh, decoder. Uh, once you have the parameter specification and the encoder and decoder, these are all app specific, you use the dot add app method, and then you, you add these to the campaign as a new app, and in this case, we've just called it PC. Um, and then you add uh, a collator to collate your results. We're just using the, the standard built-in aggregate samples, which, which works very simply. Uh, and maybe I can go to the next slide somehow? No? <laughs> no, okay. Right, so I can do it by doing that. That's weird. That's quite frustrating to you. Okay, the, this is the final half, uh, or the second half. Uh, now we wanna create, we wanna do some sampling. So the, this PCE, this is polynomial chaos expansion in this case. So we, we, we have to create this dictionary that says what we want to vary and what, um, what distribution those variables vary according to. So in this case, we're varying kappa and uh, tnv. Um, we're saying that both of these are, are uniformly distributed, but they could be Gaussian or, or whatever. We're using ChaosPy as a, as a dependency to this library. So ChaosPy has a bunch of other um, distributions you can use. So you, you create that sampler with, with what it needs to vary, and then you set it. You set the campaign so it's now using the sampler. Uh, now you have a stage where you, you then just, you draw samples. In this case, because it's a, an example, we've just drawn all samples at once. But you can have this draw, uh, say if you put 100 here, it would draw up to 100 samples. Um, so you, you can kind of, you can run this gradually if you have to. 
not really going to talk about this. This is just doing local execution, but we don't handle execution at all here. This is just running it locally, but in principle, we would have, okay, fuck, thanks. Uh, but in principle, we would have any, um, any kind of middleware stuff goes here or is kind of in, embedded inside the collation element. Here we run the collate. So my campaign.collate will collate any, any jobs which have run, do all of that for you. Again, you can call this multiple times. If you want to draw 10 samples, then call collate and draw 10 samples. It, collate will just append any jobs which have finished. Um, finally, you can run, say, the PC analysis on, on that output and have a look at what kind of uh, results you're getting that are, are, are related to the, to the an analysis element. So that's, that was a simple single scale uh, example. Um, there's not really much time for anything else. Uh, everyone loves adding exascale to their uh, proposals. Obviously, everyone's doing exascale now. Um, in this case, if you don't like that word, we can just say we just mean efficiently using very large amounts of computing resources. Um, the idea here is we want to scale up to, say, a million or a billion jobs. Um, it's not so simple when you've got Especially if you're using Python, you have some kind of overhead. So obviously, we have to do a few things like that. Um, but we're kind of solving this with uh, reducing communication with the database um, and looking at where best to encode, decode, and collate in the workflow. The, the idea of the way we've set it up is that you can arrange, you can try out different kind of orders to all these things. So you, you can try a, a different, a different approach without having to change anything. Um, or we could do this stuff in parallel. Um, so that's, that's what I'll just quickly show here. We've been working with our collaborators in Poznan Supercomputing Center. Uh, these are the people that Derek kept saying QCG. That's what we're talking about. Here's the, this is the pilot job manager. And what we've basically been doing there is using EasyVQ as the control script for the pilot job manager. So whenever it wants to add jobs, it can just um, register them with the pilot job manager it runs them all. So we're effectively, we don't want to handle execution at all. We're offloading as much as possible onto the middleware. Um, the idea behind these, these elements is just that you, hide, you abstract away um, this really specific stuff, right? So people can plug and play or, or swap out. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, OK. So um, we. Did a release, it's a very early release. So there, this is EasyVQ, it's a Python 3.6 plus. Um, we, we've LGPL'd the, the license for now. It is on the Python package index, so you can, in principle, run pip install. It's been working for us, I don't know yet. Um, we've written documentation, read the docs. Um, there's tutorials on there, at least one. Um, and this is just the month 12 release on the project, so it's very much alpha <laughs> using a friendly user phase, which means don't get angry with us if you know, it doesn't contain more than a few features yet. Um, go to Pensy on CKSPy, SQL Alchemy to do various kinds of backend databases, um, pandas. And we've got continuous integration set up with Travis and, and PyTest. So that's... Anyway, um, basically, this was a Python library. Uh, for adding validation, verification, and certificate quantification to uh, eventually multi-scale HPC workflows. Uh, we have multiple database backends supporting, included, uh, including just in memory. Um, it can uh, later, well, currently support multiple apps, multiple campaigns. Um, with restartability, so all, all of these elements can serialize their state to database, it can be deserialized. Um, that's how we implement this restart ability. Um, it's, it's meant to act as a test bed for, for the VECMA project. So conceptual output. Um, and uh, yeah, we've, had, we've got a few things implemented so far. Polynomial chaos, ensemble bootstrapping, and so on. But they, we need to implement a lot more. Um, future developments. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're kind of, it's this co-designed thing. So we're, we're kind of working with, with the users and, and Part of, of, of this kind of design has come from working with, say, Jalal, who's just re-entered the room. Um, and because uh, he, he's the one who has this a million jobs plus kind of requirement. So that, that's kind of what motivates us to do certain things. Um, 
more application specific encoders decoders and getting it working with other middleware and seeing how or if that forces us to change our core design because that's kind of how we've been moving forward with it. Uh, anyway, thanks very much. Uh, this is, uh, I just want to point out David Wright, who's, who's not here, but he's, he's co-developer on this and did an, an awful lot of work on it too. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you.